Welcome to the Creating Well Simplified Podcast. My name is Lauren Wells, here with my co-host, Chris Seveny. We're committed to providing you with the knowledge required to build wealth through real estate investing. Tired of consuming content about real estate? Stuck in analysis paralysis? Ready to do your first deal? As a member of our community, you will learn how to go from consuming content to taking that first step into the world of real estate investing. Our show is not about getting rich quick, but about providing you with the knowledge you need to take action. Join us as we speak with experienced investors who share action tips on how to escape the corporate world, start a thriving side hustle in the world of real estate, and go beyond your W-2 or 401k. Welcome everyone to the Creating Wealth Simplified podcast, where each week we bring you education and information that will help you take your next step in building wealth through real estate. I am your host, Lauren Wells, and joining me today is John Bowens of Equity Trust. Thanks for joining us, John. Thank you for having me, Lauren. Really excited to be here. Love the show. It's great to see you again. And uh, excited to share with your audience a little bit about what I do and a little bit about what our customers do here as far as self-directing their IRAs into various private market investments, which I know you're very familiar with. Yeah. And so I'm happy to answer any questions that you or any of the listeners have. Yeah. So just to give our listeners a little bit of a background, you know, John is one of the most sought after and respected educators in the self-directed IRA space, you know, as a director, head of education and investor success at Equity Trust, you know, John is able to draw from his 20 years in real estate and his experience as an active investor In his travels across the U.S. and virtually, he has trained over 60,000 investors during more than 400 workshops and classes, spreading the message about the power of building tax-free wealth and leaving a lasting legacy by investing in what investors know best. And I think, John, that just speaks so well to what our podcast is trying to do, really educate and give people the tools and knowledge to take control of their own finances and their own future. So I love that and happy to have you here today. I know that self-directed IRAs come up all the time with conversations I know I'm having with investors, friends, former colleagues. Um, And I'm sure you're not going to be shocked to know, and I'm sure you'll agree with me, that a lot of people really have no idea about a self-directed IRA that is not with a custodian like Schwab or Fidelity. Sometimes when I talk and I'm explaining how, oh, I have a solo 401k or a self-directed IRA with, you know, X company, they're like, we, I don't understand. It's like, I'm talking a separate language. So give me a little bit of like your experience in what you come across when speaking with people. So not uncommon, Lauren, (laughs) I I can tell you that I have those conversations every day. My my team of IRA counselors here, every day we get phone calls. Wow, I wish I would have known about this 10, 15, 20 years ago. And 20 years ago, when I got involved in real estate, I was working for a a small mom and pop real estate company. And uh, I was also in business finance school and I was learning all about IRAs and 401ks and other retirement plans. And I was learning about the stock market primarily and investment management around the public markets. And so I was on the trajectory to become a financial advisor, financial planner, but I was involved in real estate. And I went to the founders of this company I was working for and I said, you know, you guys have never talked about your IRAs or 401ks. I've been learning all about the tax advantages of IRAs and retirement plans. You know, why don't you have these types of accounts? And they said, well, John, we're in real estate. We've made our wealth in real estate. We're going to leave a legacy to our family with real estate, to our children or grandchildren with real estate. And we don't believe in those IRAs and 401ks and other retirement plans because we don't believe in the stock market. And it's, it's a shame, I think, but unfortunately, many of us have been conditioned from a very young age, academically, I spent thousands of dollars academically to pursue this degree, to pursue this, this career path. And no one ever told me that you could own real estate, that you can own a private credit fund, that you can, or an interest in a private credit fund, that you could invest in private money loans, that you could buy and sell privately held companies or shares of privately held companies. No one ever told me that you could do that with an IRA. I was conditioned to think that the only way to save in a retirement plan and to invest in a retirement plan was to invest in the public markets. That is the stock market, mutual funds, ETFs, 
bond funds, maybe some treasury securities, right? Publicly listed and publicly available investments. No one ever told me about the private markets. Mm -hmm. And so 15 years ago, I met our company founder. His name is Dick Desich, and he's widely known as the pioneer of the self-directed IRA industry. He put together one of the very first real estate transactions with IRA investors back in 1983. And it was a real estate syndication. There were 22 IRA investors that were invested in, a, in an entity in a limited partnership. And each of those IRA investors investing only about $6,000 made nearly $200,000 over 19 years on that transaction, all tax deferred in their traditional IRAs. And so I met Mr. Desich, he became my mentor. And uh, I was immediately at that point hooked because I, I learned that I could own real estate in an IRA. I could invest in the private markets. My income that I generate from, let's say, residential rental property is tax exempt in the IRA. I could also make private money loans. So I can make loans to real estate investors, let's say a house flipper, for example, and all my profits go back into the IRA. And as long as I structure things properly and I follow the rules, I pay no tax. And so I thought, wow, that's this is a really smart idea. Being able to use an IRA or retirement plan to invest in the private markets, specifically invest in real estate. And that could be owning real estate directly. It could be real, owning real estate through a fund type structure, like a, like a Reg D type fund, or maybe on the private credit side. So making loans to real estate investors, that might be direct lending with the IRA, or it might be investing through some sort of fund structure. And so I, I learned about all these types of things and I learned about all the tax advantages. And I always call it compounding interest in the absence of taxation. That's what I learned from Mr. Desich 15 years ago, compounding interest with no taxes. And I learned that what that does is it helps people get to their retirement goals and their financial goals in a shorter period of time. So I had to make the decision at that time to sort of abandon the traditional model of public equities and public assets and move in this direction of alternative investments, private market investments. And um, it's it's done very well. I've done very well with it. Uh, I've had the opportunity to create a portfolio of private market investments for myself and my spouse, investing in real estate, private money lending, other types of alternative investments. And uh, to what you said before, Lauren, uh, also being able to train over 60,000 investors across the country. And so most people, they've, they've never heard about this because they're not because they're doing something wrong, but probably yeah. because whoever they're around right now, whoever's within their financial circle probably just isn't talking about it. Maybe they don't have somebody like you, Lauren, that can educate them on this or have somebody like myself or Equity Trust to educate them. Or maybe they have a financial advisor or financial planner, but that financial advisor or financial planner, it's not that they might not, it's not that they're doing a bad job for that person. It just might mean that they're not incentivized to provide information around investing in the private markets because they may only be compensated if you put your money in the public markets. And so it's important for consumers and investors to understand that not everybody's going to talk about this concept of self directed IRAs and investing in alternative assets because some of those people just may not be able to make money on it. They may not be incentivized to talk about it. And so, um, lastly, I'll mention that it um, self-directed is just an industry term. So it just indicates that you have the ability to take control and be able to invest in the private markets. You don't have to rely on someone else. Yeah, so let me, let me ask you this. You were on the path to becoming a financial advisor. And one thing that I find so interesting is when I'm talking to someone, they're like, oh, I have a self-directed IRA. And I'm like, okay, you like you, I ought to, most of the time I assume they're going to say, yeah, it's with fidelity. And typically that's the way the conversation goes. Oh, well, like my financial advisor never told me about this. They would know about this. How, like, this can't be like a thing if they would, they would tell me if this was a thing. And I think again, not that financial, I guess I'm curious, was this something that you were taught as you were going through like this option? Was it something that was you were you learned about when you were on that track to become a financial advisor? It, it, no, I, I no one ever told me about it. And, and that's why it, it sort of even upsets me looking back on it in retrospect. I'm like, why didn't I was around all these smart people and no one ever taught me about it? And, and I never even was really taught much about the private markets. You know, yeah. everything I was taught and conditioned is, you know, this model of publicly traded assets you know, a certain percentage of equities, a certain percentage of fixed income, 
large cap, mid cap, small cap, depending on your age and tolerance, right? You're going to allocate your resources accordingly. But nowhere did I ever learn about the private markets. Nowhere did I ever learn that I could use an IRA to invest in real estate. And, and for example, and I wish someone would have told me this 20 years ago, but again, I learned about it 15 years ago, right? Yeah. Um, you know, a good example is I had a client last year. He uh, He's a house flipper and he had an opportunity to put 13,000 and some change from his Roth IRA into a real estate joint venture. He found the deal. He brought another money partner, another investor partner into the transaction. They did a real estate joint venture. It was a pretty straightforward single family flip transaction. And he ended up making 34,000 tax free in his Roth IRA. So he invested 13,000 and some change. He made 34,000. He paid 0% tax. He grew his Roth IRA from 13,000 and some change to over $47,000, 100% tax free. He'll never pay taxes again. Now that's, that's a home run transaction. Okay. Yeah. So that, that's not the everyday transaction, but you think about it from a compounding interest perspective and being able to create those dollars in the Roth IRA, for example, there are other types of accounts as well, but specifically a Roth IRA is a tax-free account. And so if you're compounding your interest in a tax-free Roth, eventually when you take the money out, you pay 0% tax, you leave it to your children or grandchildren, and they pay 0% tax. So 15 years ago, I started learning about the power of this compounding interest in the absence of taxation and how I can invest in the private markets and potentially make a better rate of return than what the public markets are doing. Now, I can't advise people or tell people that just by investing in the private markets, you're going to be, be able to outbeat the public markets, mm -hmm. or you're going to be able to significantly reduce your risk by investing in private assets. Ultimately, diversification and risk is in the eyes of the investor. And what I really do and what I teach is helping people be more involved with their money. We always talk about here how money likes speed and money likes us to be involved. And so if we're not being good stewards of our own money, if we're not involved in managing our own money, we shouldn't be surprised if we take losses. And and, and that's just the, the truth of the matter. Yeah. And so uh, we we have a lot of folks here and I work with a lot of folks, friends, family members, clients, business colleagues that they want to take control and they want to invest. They want to examine the transactions. They want to find investments that make sense for them. And they want to invest in assets that are close to hard assets, meaning they want to have a lien on a property or they want to own real estate in their IRA, or they want to have a, a membership interest in an entity that owns real estate. They want to own hard assets. They don't want to invest in a, in a paper asset that they don't have confidence in. So, who does this kind of, if I'm listening to this conversation, I'm like, wow, I'm one of those people that has an IRA with Schwab and I would love, I would love to diversify outside of that. Like, I guess, who does this make sense for? Who does it make sense for? And more importantly, I guess, who does it not make sense for? Like, is there a minimum you would suggest you should have in an account where you're like, okay, this makes sense from an investment perspective? That That's a good question is who is it not for? And I'll, I'll start there. Um, as far as minimums are concerned, th there really are no minimums per se from a custody perspective. See, equity trusts were a directed custodian. We're not going to tell someone that they can't move money over into a self-directed IRA and make an investment unless they were trying to do something that was blatantly prohibited. But by and large, we're not going to prevent them from making investments. We're not their fiduciary. Um so there's really no minimums. The minimums are really going to be determined by the investor and maybe the investments that they're making, right? So sometimes if you're investing in a private fund, they're going to have a minimum investment. Maybe that's very small. Maybe it's only five or 10,000, or maybe it's 25,000, or maybe it's 50,000, right? So the investor is going to have that conversation with whoever they're working with, whoever they're investing with to determine what their minimums are. Um, as far as... Uh, moving money over from one IRA firm to equity trust, that's a pretty straightforward process. All one is doing is transferring or rolling money over from one 401k provider or IRA custodian to an equity to the equity trust account. So that's a simple transfer or rollover process. And one of the common questions I get is, if I roll money over or transfer money, are there adverse tax consequences or penalties? And the answer is absolutely no. 
So you're just moving money from one account to another. As long as you follow the process and all of the guidelines, you won't have any issues with moving your money over without any tax consequences. And then when sending money out for an investment, so let's say I buy a property or I make a private money loan or I invest in a private credit fund, whatever it is that I'm doing, I'm not borrowing against the account. I'm not distributing money from the account. I'm actually making an investment. You want to think of it just like buying a stock or mutual fund, which is what most people are familiar with. When you buy a stock, cash leaves the account. In return for that, cash is a stock certificate. Now, in today's day, it's all in electronic form, but that's what it is. That's the underlying asset. When you buy real estate or you invest in a private credit fund, it's the same process. So IRA money leaves the account in exchange is a membership interest called a subscription, or it might be a property. So you actually have a deed to a property. Or like myself, I do private money loans to real estate investors secured by their properties. So when my IRA money sends funds out for a private money loan, I have a lien on that property. I have a promissory note and a mortgage. So that's the best way for listeners to think about this logistically is just moving money into a self-directed IRA with a company like Equity Trust, who's a custodian that specializes in these types of alternative assets, and then directing your funds out for the investment. And don't be surprised if you go to your current financial institution and you say, oh, I want to buy real estate or I want to invest in this private asset. They're probably not going to allow you to do that. Not because they're doing a bad job. It's just that that's not their core competency. That's not their specialization. Their specialization is stocks, bonds, mutual funds, traditional investments. Whereas our specialization as a custodian is helping people invest in these alternative assets. So to answer your question in a roundabout way, Lauren, who this isn't for is for the people who don't necessarily want to be involved in the management of their money. If, if they want to solely rely on a financial advisor or wealth management consultant, then this isn't really for you. This is for the folks that want to take control and want to invest in the private markets and yep. want to spend a little bit of time being involved in the management of their money, it doesn't mean that they're dealing with tenants and toilets, right? That's not always what it means. There's plenty of very turnkey investment opportunities that one can participate in the private markets, but there is a, a different degree of involvement. Again, not relying solely on a financial advisor or financial planner that keep in mind, generally they can only sell you specific investment opportunities traditionally public market investments. Those are the only types of investments that they're going to be able to sell you. Um, there are some financial advisors um, and wealth management consultants out there that are more friendly to private market investments and that do help people invest in the private markets. So don't think that you're going to meet your financial advisor or financial planner with a ton of opposition. There are lots of financial advisors that I meet out there that do a really great job for their clients and they're very, very open to investing in alternative assets. So the, the moral of the story there is don't be afraid to ask questions about that. And especially for those that are in real estate investing already, those folks I find are the folks that tend to gravitate towards self-directed IRAs and uh, sort of have an accelerated pathway to be able to start investing with their IRA funds and it makes a lot of sense for them because they're leveraging a skill set that they already have. And they're just replicating that in their self-directed IRA. And of course, the byproduct is saving money on taxes on their investment returns. Yeah. And I think for like a few notes there, you know, what with what we're seeing with layoffs, because let's talk about like timing, like when would I, when would I do this? I think one thing that for me personally was so unclear before I moved into real estate, when you leave an employer or let go, which we're seeing a lot of, especially in, I'm in California, so we're seeing a ton of that in the um, tech space. These people are leaving companies with huge 401ks typically, like let's make that assumption. Um, and so what they're being told is, okay, you can keep it with us. You can roll it over to you know a Fidelity or Schwab, no one really talks about the third option. So, and I think because they, like we've talked about, just don't know, but that third option is you can roll that money or part of it even into a self-directed IRA that allows you to invest in real estate. And a lot of people, I think the advantage to that is there are people who are, I don't even know that how I would term this. They are IRA rich, 401k rich, but they don't have cash, but they're interested in real estate. 
and this might be more for, you know, my contemporaries and colleagues that are, you know, kids, two kids at home, putting them through school and daycare. And we're like, I still want to get involved in real estate. And I have this 401k. I don't really necessarily have the liquid cash from, you know, savings to invest personally. And I think that's another really good play for people is, you know, they do want to be involved. They know real estate is the way to go. They might still dabble in the stock market, but I think that th keeping that in mind, like if you have, if you're leaving an employer, switching jobs or are let go for whatever reason, you have that opportunity to roll that into an IRA that does allow you to kind of get into the market. You're absolutely correct, Lauren. Uh, when someone leaves an employer, they can roll their money over into a self-directed IRA. And that's a very simple process. So it's just a matter of opening an account. And that process only takes really minutes. So that's like opening up a bank account. Mm -hmm. And then initiating a rollover from another employer 401k, that's just a simple phone call that one would make to their employer plan administrator and Equity Trust, we have services where we help customers do that. Now, we don't advise on, should you sell this stock or buy this stock? We just simply will help facilitate that process to help that individual roll over their money into a self-directed IRA. So then they're in a prepared position to be able to direct their funds. And I'm glad you brought up timing, Lauren, because it does take a little bit of time to roll money over into a self-directed IRA. So if somebody is lining up an investment opportunity, whether it's in a private credit fund or a property yep. or a private loan deal, they have to make sure their account is set up and funded well in advance. And I always let people know as well that they don't have to move all their money into a self-directed IRA. So maybe they still wanna have some exposure to the stock market, to mutual funds, to bonds, to bond funds, uh, ETFs. Mm -hmm. So they can still continue to work with maybe a financial advisor or a wealth management consultant over here and then they can roll over just what they want to get started with their self-directed alternative asset or private market investments. And then if they want to move more money over at a later date, they can do that. If they want to move money back to the public markets, they have the ability to do that. So really, this whole concept of self-directed IRA gives people a lot more freedom and options as far as what they have the opportunity to invest in. Yeah, I agree 100%. Um, can we talk about things that you like what are so you talked about that you mentioned this briefly earlier like unless it's ex clearly prohibited so you know mm -hmm. there is a lot of flexibility within the self-directed ira space however what are some of the things that are not allowed sure so in 1974 when the law was passed that created these iras and other retirement plans it was called the employee retirement income securities act of 1974 and the law is exclusive rather than being inclusive so the government only tells us what we can't invest in, not what we can invest in. So what we can't invest in with our IRA is collectibles. So things like artwork, uh, rugs, antiques, those types of investments. Uh, our IRA cannot be an I investor. I've kind of heard that one before. Yeah, yeah. Artwork <laughs> is, I, I actually, you know, it's interesting you bring that up. So artwork I have seen out in the markets, in the private markets, has actually become quite popular. Um, investing in um, art credit funds or art debt funds, um, actual individual funds that own art. And yeah, it's, it's, it's uh, I can't do that with an IRA because it's considered a collectible. Um, and, and then from there, the tax code tells us that we cannot transact our IRA with certain persons. They call these disqualified persons un under 4975 of the tax code. And those would include ourselves to our IRA our children, our grandchildren, our parents, our grandparents, and then any businesses that we own and operate. So for example, if I own a piece of real estate now, I can't put that in my IRA. My IRA can't buy it from myself. I can't take money from my IRA and loan it to myself. And what you find, Lauren, is that a lot of these laws, they're common sense laws. These mm -hmm. IRAs are super highly tax privileged accounts like yeah. we've been talking about. And so obviously the government isn't going to allow us to benefit ourselves in the here and now. We need to make investments for the benefit of the IRA and the benefit of the IRA only. Yeah. So you're saying I can't buy a house and live in it or put it in our name. It's owned by the, yeah. Okay. Just yep. Like, yeah. What with equity, like kind of let's shift to equity. Cause you know, there's a lot of different options out there when it comes to custodians kind of what separates equity and what, 
would you say if you were looking at different custodians for the first time, you would say these top five things are things I would evaluate? So there's a being in the industry for 15 years, I've seen the industry evolve. Um, and what I saw occur 15 years ago is a lot of growth in this industry. Um, and the reason why is because we were in the great recession and real estate went on sale. A lot of people took a lot of losses in their 401ks. A lot of people were displaced from their careers and occupations in the great recession. And what came out of that is people were able to roll over their 401ks and start buying real estate because real estate was on sale. And so the industry grew in a very rapid way. Our company benefited from that. We've been around since 1974. So we were positioned well to uh, be able to be part of that growth. But what also happened is there were a lot of individuals out there that saw dollar signs and opportunities and thought, wow, I can get in the self-directed IRA business. And I can open these accounts and I can, I can create a business. And that may have worked well for a little while, but what we find is some of these companies can't, they can't weather the storm. And a lot of them didn't weather the storm very well in the pandemic. They weren't tooled properly. They didn't have disaster relief systems in place. They didn't have remote work systems in place. And the, the service was, uh, was abysmal at that time. And we were fortunate to be able to weather the storm very well. We have nearly 500 associates. We're set up to be able to work remotely when we need to. We have physical offices in Cleveland, South Dakota, Denver. Uh, so we were very fortunate to weather the storm. And what's happened over the years is there's been a number of companies that have had to sell, whether they go into receivership or there's some other type of financial situation, and then they get bought by another company. We've been fortunate to acquire about 13 different trust companies over the years. And so what I encourage people, the reason why I say all this is because when, when you're looking for a custodian, find a custodian, and it doesn't have to be equity trust. I'm not here to just sell equity trust. Um, find a custodian that's been around for a long time um, and a custodian that has some size. Uh, we're fortunate to have over just over close to 40 billion in assets under custody and administration, and we've been doing it for close to 50 years. Uh, we have competitors, of course, out there that you know are sizable as well. So I always encourage folks, you know, find a company that has size and stability and that is in it for the long haul. Find out what is, who is their ownership? Who is their ownership made of? Uh, our ownership here, the Desage family, they've been doing this for close to 50 years. They're very passionate about our business. Our company founder, who is still the chairman of the board, Dick Desage, he was, uh, some people call him the inventor of the self-directed IRA. He's widely known as the pioneer. So I encourage folks to find a company that has stability. Uh, number two would be one-on-one uh, -on -one personalized support. Uh, Lauren, I know before you hit record, we were just talking about our model that we have here where you work with a single point of contact to take you through the account open process. And then you have a single point of contact that takes you through the investment process. We have found that to be very, very important to our clients. Uh, and that that's the communication that they've they've provided to us is that, hey, we like this model of having a single point of contact. Whereas some other firms out there, in order to even talk to someone, you have to schedule a pre-planned call. So you can't even just call in. You have to go into a calendar system and, yeah. and schedule a call. So um, unfortunately, service I have found to be a challenge in the industry. And um, we're not interested in going uh, in that direction of you know artificial intelligence. A robot can answer every question. These are alternative assets in self-directed IRAs. Right. So I don't think an artificial bot is going to be able to answer a lot of the questions that our customers have. So we try to we try to take that approach in our business. And uh, lastly, education. Uh, we have a lot of videos on YouTube and other sources. So if folks want to learn more, it's easy for them to find uh, education on various topics that relate to self-directed IRAs. Awesome. Well, that kind of segues well into if people are interested in you know opening an account or getting in touch and speaking with someone at equity like where would they find you how can they do that yeah real easy to find our website trustetc.com it looks like trust etc uh, or just do an internet search for equity trust company we're easy to find and um, you could also go to our youtube page just search equity trust company on youtube and you'll find all sorts of videos um, you'll find lauren very similar to the content you guys create Yep. Um, very educational, very informative. There's no hype or flash or, you know, Lamborghinis driving around in the background. 
that's that's not who we are um, as a firm. I know that's not a, who your organization yep. is either. And that's why we appreciate so much being able to do these types of things together. And uh, so you can go on our YouTube page and you find a lot of good education that you can take advantage of. And then on our website, you'll find our toll free number. You can call in, speak to a live representative. Uh, we call them IRA counselors. They're here to educate you. Uh, we don't sell investments. We don't give advice. So you know that you're talking to someone that is here to educate you, answer your questions. And if it makes sense for you to proceed and open up a self-directed IRA, we can help you with that. If not, if you want to you know, go on the, the traditional path, that's okay too. Um, you know, we're very, um, uh, we're, we're very, uh, willing to just be able to be there as a resource for individuals. Love that. Well, thank you so much, Sean, for joining us today and sharing your insight and your knowledge into this space. Um, for those listening, if you enjoyed the show, please share it with a friend, subscribe, or leave us a review till next time. Thank you. Thanks, Lauren. Thank you for joining Lauren and I on this episode of the Creating Wealth Simplified podcast. Each week, we bring you expert education, experience, and information in a digestible format to help you identify investment opportunities so you can build wealth through real estate and take action toward your financial goals. Enjoy the show, share with a friend or subscribe to the show, and leave us a review. 